What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tool tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk through how to use some of the different construction plane tools in order to add helpful guides inside of your models, which you can then use as sketch planes and other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things that's really useful inside of Fusion 360 is having the ability to create construction planes that act as guides for different things inside of your models. So let's say, for example, that we were to extrude an object into three dimensions like this, and we'll go ahead and call this 50 millimeters for right now. So let's say that you wanted to add something like a recess inside of this model a certain distance away from this face. Now one thing you could do is you could come in here and draw a sketch plane and then draw edges from the top in order to make sure that you've got this where you want it to be. You could draw all of that in there, but there's a much faster, easier way to do that. And that's going to be to use the construction planes. So in this video, we're gonna focus specifically on the planes in the top portion of this. We can talk about these other settings at a future point. But for right now, let's just talk through this. So the simplest plane you can use is an offset plane. And so what that's going to do is that's going to set a construction plane that's offset a certain distance from a face that you select. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to create a recess 10 millimeters down from the top of this box. Well, what you would do is you would activate offset plane. You would click on this face to set your base face or your base plane, and then you would set a distance. So in this situation, for example, let's say we were 10 inches down, we would just type in a value of negative 10 and hit the enter key. Well now, what you can do is you can use this plane that we've created as a sketch plane. So if we click on create sketch, for example, remember how some of these are already built in for your red, green, and blue axes? Well, you can also click on this plane that we just selected and draw based on that. So let's say, for example, that we just wanted to draw a simple recess that was maybe going to go, we'll call it 10 millimeters in, 20 millimeters wide. All we have to do is just draw this on that plane. So we'll finish drawing this out. And then once we've done that, we've got a sketch object in here that we can use. We'll go ahead and close this in the rest of the way. But now we can select this object and we can extrude it down. We'll turn our body back on, but you could use this to create your recess. So you can use this to very precisely place something like a recess inside of your model. And so the second option in your construction planes allows you to create a plane at an angle from an edge. So if I was to click on this one, you can see how instead of allowing me to select a face, this is basically lighting up anything that is an edge. So this works based off of a line or an edge rather than a face. And let's say that we wanted to create something based on this corner. Well, we could click on this corner and then you can see how this gives you a little circle right here that allows you to rotate this. You can also type in a value as well. So let's say for example that we wanted this to be at a 45 degree angle. We could go ahead and click OK and then we could use that as a sketch plane to start adding things. So for example, let's say that we wanted to add like uh, something for a screw recess or something like that. We could set this plane as our sketch plane and then we could come in here and we could draw something like a circle and finish our sketch. You can see how this gets drawn at that 45 degree angle. And then you can do some interesting things with either cutting holes or let's say we wanted this to join a little bit. We could set this to join based on that face. Um, we could extrude this up a little bit so that it extends out. There's a lot of interesting things you can do once you can set an angle based on a plane location. And so then we could come in here if we wanted to and we could um, edit out or we could add like a screw hole or other things like that. So you can see how you could use this to either add or also cut geometry into this original shape. So we've talked a little bit about how to handle offsetting from a flat face and also how to create something at an angle. Well, sometimes you wanna create something based on a curve. So let's say that we were to draw a cylinder inside of Fusion 360. So if we were to draw a cylinder right here and we were to extrude that up, We'll call that 50 millimeters as well. But let's say that we wanted to draw something based on a certain angle on this face. Well, those first two options won't work. The offset plane is set for flat faces. The plane at angle is set for um, straight edges. But the tangent plane allows you to select a face 
and then create a plane along that curved face. So you can see how here I could set this so that it has a certain number of degrees based on, um, based on the base location of this. But then the other thing you can do is you can also use the option for reference plane in order to align this to different angles. So for example, you can see how I can set my reference plane right here to align this object with these different faces. So you can see how you just select reference plane and then like for example if I wanted it to align with this back wall I could just click on this back wall. So you can use the reference plane option in order to align a tangent plane along a curved face with other objects in your model. Notice that this doesn't work with like this curved face right here. That's because this is at an off axis, meaning it's been rotated not only um, along the flat axis here, but also up and down, meaning it doesn't really align with this face. So you can't use that as a tangent plane, but this still does give you a lot of different options for setting that tangent plane inside of your models. So the mid-plane option is really good for finding the middle point between two faces that you select. So for example, let's say that we wanted to find the middle point between this face and this face on our box. Well, you could come in here and measure this edge and then draw something out manually. Or if you click this drop down, there's an option for mid-plane, which allows you to select two faces. So in this case, I'm going to select this face and this face, and it's going to create a mid-plane based on the middle point of this object. So it's really easy to find the middle point between different faces using the mid-plane option. And one thing I want to point out about this is not only does this work for faces that are parallel with each other, it also works with other faces. So like for example, these two are perpendicular. So if I was to select this plane, and this plane, you can see how this gives me an angle, or this gives me a plane at an angle that kind of averages between these two different faces. So you can use this to kind of average between different faces as well if you need something like this. So sometimes the operations you want to do get a little bit more complicated than simply finding the middle point between two parallel faces or something like that. There's also tools in here to find other things. Like for example, I could create a plane through two edges. So let's say that I wanted to create something that basically averages between this edge and this edge. Well, you couldn't really use any of the tools that we had before. I mean, you could kind of guess with the plane at angle, but the plane between two edges allows you to select two different edges and it'll actually create a plane based on that location. So if I wanted to create a sketch plane that ran evenly between this edge and this edge, you could use the plane through two edges option. So you can see how any two straight edges, this will allow you to create a plane between them. So however, this really only works for edges that create kind of a plane. So for example, if I was to try to do that between this edge and this edge, that wouldn't work because you're, there's not really any location where you could create just a flat plane between these two edges because they're running at different angles in different directions. So if you wanted to do something like that, there's another tool in here called Plane Through Three Points. So what Plane Through Three Points does is that allows you to set three points. So maybe this one, this one, and this one, and you can create a plane based on that. So, and notice that you can turn all of these off, by the way, um, by going into the um, going into the construction plane um, folder on the left-hand side of your browser. But you can see how this allows me to create a plane that runs between these three points. So if you have kind of an irregular shape or something that isn't as simple as just running a plane through two edges, you can use the three points in order to create a flat plane through those three points. So this would also work if we were to go from here to here to here. So it really allows you to kind of set those planes based on what you're trying to do through those three points. So we talked a little bit about setting the tangent edge along a face in order to set a plane based on an angle on a curved face. We also talked about how to align that with another face inside of your model. You can also use the plane tangent to face at point in order to align that tangent plane with a point. So if I was to click on this face, for example, and then I was to click on a point, you can see how that would align a tangent plane along this curve based on this point. So 
you can do that with really any point in your model so if you want to create something that kind of aligns with something else in here you can use a plane doing this and remember that again one of the reasons that this is really important is because this allows you to come in here and create different sketches and other things at those odd angles so that's one of the really powerful things about Fusion 360 is you can see how it gives you the ability to do stuff like this um, without having to do a whole bunch of extra work it's very intuitive And then this last option is really interesting. It allows you to create a plane that's perpendicular to a path. So for example, if I was to click on this, then I was to click on this curved path, you can see how this allows you to set a plane that's perpendicular to that path at any point. And so not only can you do this um, based on dragging the arrow, you can also either use an actual physical distance along your path. So you could set this so 500 millimeters along the path, we create a plane, or you could also do it proportionally, meaning you could set this based on a percentage. So you could say if we wanted this to be 25% of this path or at 25% of the overall length of the path, we can set that using the proportional option. And so this can be really helpful um, if you're trying to create planes or if you're trying to create extrusions along paths, this allows you to come in here and really easily create those extrusions based on a profile that you set. So for example, if I wanted to sweep this along this path, we would just select our path, we'd select our profile, and you can see how because that allowed us to draw this perpendicularly to this path, it was really easy for us to come in here and draw that sketch and then create this extrusion without any problems. So obviously there are a lot of useful applications for this. I wanted to give you kind of an idea of some of the capabilities that we have to create those construction planes. You can then use as sketch planes or references or anything else inside of Fusion 360. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know that you could do this with these tools inside of Fusion 360? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.